Good morning and a very warm welcome to worship on what is a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? So we'll start by remaining seated to sing Jesus, You Are Changing. <coughs> Take my word for it. 
is doing a one-man show at Holy Cross, and it's very short notice, next Saturday at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's £10 a ticket. I just happen to have some tickets. <laughs> um, and he promised it, well, I can tell you, it'll be an entertaining evening. It won't be a long evening, maybe an hour, hour and a half, uh, with a range from Vivaldi to Elton John. Uh, and it won't, won't be quite on the scale of Andre Roux, but he said if anybody feels like dancing or singing along, they're very welcome. So do so, you have to do it if you want to sing it. Thank you. And Heather's making use of it to short I am. Oh, yes, and one more. Um, it's the same for the date, we hope. So last week, or the week before, I think I mentioned that Churches Together is trying to organise a hustings event with the local candidates. Um, sadly, there's not a huge take-up at the moment from the local candidates for the election to come and sit before the people of Cambridge. <laughs> but Duncan is on it. So the date that we're proposing is either Tuesday the 25th or Thursday the 27th. Um, it might not happen, because clearly if there's only two candidates there, it probably isn't a valid event. But just so that you keep those evenings free in your diary, if you would like to come and question the candidates for the election on the 4th of July. We will obviously confirm if we get a good going um, turnout in all that. We are going to host our Hastings event as a Churches Together event. That's it. Thank you. And so, uh, Next um, worship song is on a uh, video, but please do join in. <coughs> Yes, <laughs> 
from the first book of Samuel. Then Samuel left for Ramah, but Saul went up to his home in Gibeah of Saul. Until the day Samuel died, he didn't go to see Saul again, though Samuel mourned for him, and the Lord regretted that he had made Saul king over Israel. Samuel announced David, the Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil, and be on your way. I'm sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I've chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul hears about me, he'll kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I'll show you what to do. You're to anoint for me the one I indicate. Saul so did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, do you come in peace? Samuel replied, yes, in peace, I've come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's appointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't consider his appearance or his height. I've rejected him. The Lord doesn't look at things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord hasn't chosen this one either. Jesse then made Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered. He's tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We'll not sit down until he arrives. So he sent for him and had him brought in. He was glowing with health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. 
And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. Samuel then went to Rama. May the Lord add his blessing to that reading from his holy word. sing together with your anchor hold. Mustard seed. Again he said, What 
shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them, as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. The kingdom of God was the main emphasis of Jesus' ministry, and that's accepted by most. But defining precisely what the kingdom was is a bit more difficult. So Jesus spoke in parables in order to try, like all good teachers, to simplify things. Such is the gospel this morning. The parable of the sower, or maybe it should be called the parable of the ground, is found in all three synoptic gospels. That's all except John. And it's significant and important. It has to be said that that version in Mark gives us very little detail compared with the others. But of course, we all know that parable very well. Jesus compares the kingdom to a sower going out and spreading the seed. Some of it falls on hard ground and can't take root. Some of it falls on shallow ground and although it sprouts, it later withers away. But some seed falls on good earth and produces a harvest. We are to understand, of course, that the sower is God, the seed is the kingdom, and the various types of soil represent you and me. On the surface of it, it doesn't sound as though God is a very careful farmer. After all, most of the seed that is strewn about never takes root. But, as I alluded in my opening sentence, this is not really a story about the sower or the seed, but about the different types of soil. To put it another way, the responses of different types of people to the kingdom. People are different. So are animals. According to a magazine, there's a scientist attempting to classify cats according to personality. Best of luck with that. Want to find out if little Fluffy will grow up to be a mouser or a lounger? The article asks. They're doing a kitten personality test to match pets with prospective owners. The researcher hopes that this test will cut down on the number of cats returned to rescues because they'll be a better fit it sounds pretty off the wall, but there are differences among all living species, and some match better, I guess, with, than others with different situations. Jesus knew that people are different. Once he told a parable, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path. The birds came and ate them up. Others fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. They sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil, and brought both grain some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Jesus interpreted this parable for his disciples. And basically, that interpretation tells us that different kinds of people respond to the gospel in different ways. Some do not understand the gospel. 
The pathway in their heart perhaps is too hard for the seed to bury itself and develop roots. So the seed is snatched away. Some receive the word with joy, but the soil of their heart is too rocky. So the word endures in their lives for only a short time, never develops the roots that it needs to survive. Others, Jesus tells us, allow the living word to be choked out by the cares of this world, by the lure of wealth or power or prestige, or by constant neglect of things that are needed for growth. Such as the pruning back of activities that crowd in and get in the way. We need to hear the word. We need to share with, in fellowship with other believers. And then, of course, there's the good soil. Folk who hear the word and understand it, and who bear fruit and yield. So what kind of soil are we? What kind of soil am I? Are you? How do we respond to the seed that's cast into our lives? The question really, I suppose, is what is the state of our hearts when the seeds are sown with us? With that in mind, let's think about the various conditions of the heart mentioned in the story. The hardened heart. I can't cope anymore, or life has treated me badly. I'm hard done by, I'm unloved, I'm unappreciated, it's better if I wore myself in and do what I'm good at, and avoid everything else. Then there's the distracted heart. That's a good idea. I want one of those. Oh yes, let's change the colour of the living room, and change all the furniture and carpets too. They've got a nice new something, should we have one? Oh, the gin's got an offer this week, and so it goes on. And we jump around from one thing to another. Nothing then ever gets finished. Then there's the defeated heart. The children need new shoes, money. Oh heck, we can't afford that. Now I'm worried. I wish I could sleep better. My mum's not well. What's my best friend done to her leg? These folk mean well. They have lots of interests and may or may not be a bit materialistic. The problem is there's just too much happening. Too many friends and family members may be making demands. Life is frantic and there's never time for anything like spending time with God. Material and work or personal commitment suffocate any spark of spirituality or glow of brotherly love. Then there's the hopeful, joyful heart. Wow! Look at that sunset. I can come and help you with that. Let's sit here and chat. I'll pray for you. The reality is that we have all at various times in our lives, <coughs> excuse me, quite probably experienced all of those different hearts, all of those different conditions. When we're hurt, we may well have shut ourselves in. When we're excited, we may well become distracted. We will all have experienced times when everything piles up and we feel overwhelmed. With God, we need to spend time. And sometimes it's the last thing on our minds or our schedules, and we lose sight of what's important. I'm certain too that we've all experienced those mountaintop times 
when God's magnificence has overwhelmed us, when we get raised up in a way that words can't describe. Jesus knows that none of us is perfect. The farmer in the parable would not have chosen to throw a significant amount of his precious seed into barren land. But circumstances were such that it's what happened because the sowing was done broadcast. It wasn't easy to discriminate. He simply had to cast the seed out and pray that it would, when he tilled it, catch sufficiently to bear at least some fruit. That's how it was and is with the Word of God. By our actions and words, we throw out seeds of kindness. We touch lives and hearts, even when we don't realise that's what we're doing. We do it just by being. To be a presence in the community. An open door, a friendly face, a listening ear, a loving example. Nothing more or less. A bridge from the street to the place of worship, which some may walk away from. Some may step and some may walk, uh, walk over. <clears throat> There's no pressure and there should be no risk, not from us. When we're bidden to do the best we can, we should do that in faith. Remembering that we don't make the effort by our own strength or in our own power. Jesus knew that teaching by familiar example would be the way. We also have to remember and use that model in his name, in his way, and in his time. Sometimes, often, what we ask for is fulfilled. But God may not respond in quite the way we expect. Lesson learnt. today, we think of different changes that have happened in our lives, those that have had positive effects on us, and those that were very hard. We know that you were with us through all the changes, even when we couldn't immediately see you at work. Give us the confidence to know that you are still with us, always with us. We pray for those facing difficult changes in their lives, perhaps through ill health, bereavement, unemployment. We ask that your peace and comfort be upon them. Reassure them that although their circumstances may change, you do not. We pray for those who need to make difficult decisions about their future. Give them wisdom and insight. Help them to see the positives. Encourage them, Lord, to go forward. <clears throat> we pray for those who are looking at exciting changes. Maybe a new job, a new school, a university. We think of all the young people in our community soon to finish school for the summer, especially those who are leaving schools. Strengthen them in preparation for the new adventures ahead of them. We pray for all countries where elections are taking place, where there may be massive changes that will have a huge impact. We pray too for those newly elected to office, that they will be people of integrity. We pray, Lord, for our church, Maybe there are big changes happening, or maybe things have stayed the same for a long time. 
help us to see where leaving things just as they are can also bring growth. Give our church leaders wisdom. On this Father's Day in the UK, we pray for fathers we know. And we pray for those who mourn the loss of their father on this day. As we go forward, Lord, into a new week, show us where you want us to change. Help us to listen to you. Speak to us, nudge us towards changes you would have us make. Give us the courage to go forward with you into the future. Help us to know you are near as we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us on to this temptation, but deliver us from evil.
Lord, that you love us and you can change us. Help us to trust you this week. Thank you that you love this world and you can change it. Help us to work with you this week. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always.